Okay, welcome to concept three notes. We are gonna talk about macromolecules. If there was ever an important time to listen, now is the time. If I had to only teach one thing over and over, it would be macromolecules. These are foundational to our understanding of biology. We will be talking about them all year long. And I know I've said that a couple of times, but I truly mean it when it comes to these four molecules. So if there's ever been a time to listen, now is the time. Okay, so what the heck am I talking about? These are large organic molecules. Organic just means they are containing carbon. And they make up all living things. They are, other people refer to them as the biological molecules. Um, I've always used the term macromolecules just because that's how I learned it in high school and college. Macro just means big and these are pretty large molecules in terms of molecule size, of course. They are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. We cannot live without them. I have been known to talk in hyperbole, meaning I exaggerate a lot, but I am not exaggerating the importance of these at this time. They literally run our bodies. They hold the information how to, how to run our bodies, and they provide the energy to do all of that. Everything we will learn for the rest of the semester and really the rest of the year, but especially this semester as we're doing kind of micro things, will relate back to macromolecules. So you absolutely need to understand them. So we are going to go through, here's a picture of one, um, well, I mean, picture is a strong word, um, a diagram of what one looks like structurally. This is leptin. It is an amino acid based hormone, it regulates our energy levels by inhibiting feelings of hunger. So that's what that random thing is there if you're like, what is that? But we're gonna walk through each one of these. We're gonna talk about what they do, um, their structure really basically, where we obtain them for our bodies, um, and a couple other important things we'll highlight too. So first, before we dive into each one, we need to understand how they are organized structurally. So most macromolecules are polymers made out of monomers. So what does that mean? Monomers are small, basic subunits. Think about a brick or a word, okay? That'll make sense in a second, that analogy. Polymers are larger, more complex structures made of monomers. So think about, sorry, a brick wall or sentence. So a monomer is like a brick, and those build into a brick wall, which would be the polymer. With the word analogy, words build into sentences. Monomers build into polymers. Um, an example actually related to macromolecules. Here is kind of, you know, a clip art of DNA, which is a nucleic acid. Here is one nucleotide. Nucleotides are the monomers of the polymer DNA. So if you look right here at this one nucleotide, you can see it in this molecule, in the larger piece here. So this, as we talk through the structure of each of these macromolecules, we'll talk about the monomers and the polymers that they build into. Okay, so first are carbohydrates. Their main function that we tend to think of them for is energy storage and specifically short term. I like to think of it, them as our easy to access energy. When your body needs energy, carbs are gonna be their go-to. Other uses though, they do tons of things. They have structural uses, um, uses in transporting things and also with signaling and recognition, which we'll get into that a little bit more in my homeostasis extension unit, which with my students we'll do at the end of the year. Where do we find them? In terms of the food you eat, they're coming in sugars and starches. And I'm not just talking about sugar like these sugar cubes that you put in you know, coffee or that's in cereal. Um, I mean, sugars that are in fruits and vegetables also, and those starches as well. So that's where we're getting our carbs. So when people you know, say they're getting rid of all carbs, typically they don't mean that. Typically they just mean starches, the breads and the pastas, but they're probably still eating um, carbohydrates in the form of fruits and vegetables. Okay, let's talk structure. 
The monomer, so the basic subunit, are monosaccharides, so single sugar molecules. Mono means single, so single subunit, single sugar. Examples, glucose, which is the main fuel for the cell. We will be talking about glucose so much this semester, especially in unit three. So you need to be familiar with that term. Another simple sugar molecule, another monosaccharide is galactose. That's the sugar that's in milk. And fructose, which is a simple sugar in fruit. So notice this little ring here. That's what we see. That's one single sugar molecule, one mono monosaccharide is one ring. The polysaccharides are the polymer. These are larger sugar molecules, and you can see how many are linked together in this diagram here. So examples of these more complex carbohydrates are starches. That's how plants store sugar. So think about, you know, when you're eating bread that is made from, that's starch from a plant. Glycogen is how animals like us store our sugar. And then cellulose, which is the structural support in plant cell walls. Those are all examples of polymers. Last thing I'm going to tell you about each of the macromolecules is their energy storage. This number will not mean much now, but it'll make more sense as we compare them to each other. So carbohydrates, there's about four calories of energy per gram. So this matters because our body can access and break down carbs easily. They store a decent amount of energy and thus it's um, per gram, and thus it's typically the first thing your body's going to go to to break down when it needs energy. It's going to go to carbs. Okay, next are the lipids. Their main function is also energy storage, but think more long term, not as easy to access. They do a lot of other things though too like insulation, um, protection, and structure. And that the insulation and protection makes a lot of sense too when you think that lipids are fats, um, but they're also oils. Um, so that's when you're thinking about things that you're eating, think fats and oils in terms of lipids, like we have here, peanut butter, avocados, etc. But also just structurally speaking in your body, phospholipids, which we'll talk about. They're a very special lipid. They make up the cell membrane. So the, kind of think of it as the skin that surrounds the cell. Steroids are also lipids. Okay, the monomer, there's no true monomer for lipids because um, they all can kind of vary in their structure. But in general, it's assumed to be, or, you know, if we had to pick one, it would be fatty acids. So that's like what a fatty acid looks like. It's basically carbon chains surrounded by a bunch of hydrogens. That's the simplest way I can explain what a fatty acid is. The polymer tends to be um, triglyceride. So you can see three fatty acid chains here, and then they have glycerols on them as well. So tri three. That's our polymer there. Okay, now this is where this number is important. Energy storage, nine calories per gram. So they have way more energy packed in there per gram than carbs do. But that kind of makes sense since we think of them for long term. We kind of want to pack away more. When your body runs out of those easy to access carbs, then it's going to break down your fats and those lipids next for energy. Okay, have to highlight phospholipids. They are so important. They are a very special type of lipid. This is kind of what it looks like in the simplest way I could simplify it. But it's basically two fatty acids, that's what these little tails look like, and then a phosphate group. If you look at the actual structure of the carbons and hydrogens and oxygens, it looks like this. You have the two chains, some glycerols, and then the phosphate group at the end. The head, which is this part up here, is hydrophilic. So if you remember from concept two, that means water affinity or water loving. The tail is hydrophobic, water fearing or water hating those fatty acids. So this is really fascinating because of the cell membrane. If you look at this picture, notice these two layers. So we've got the hydrophilic heads on the outside, Achoo, excuse me, and the hydrophobic tails on the inside. And this is the structure of the phospholipid bilayer, which is what makes up the plasma membrane or the cell membrane of our cells. Two layers of phospholipids. So this is a 3D picture of a cell kind of cut in half. So you can kind of see how the structure works. The reason this is so important is it makes the cell membrane selectively permeable. Meaning, 
it makes it the cell able to be picky about what it lets come in and out. And that is so important, we're gonna talk about in unit two, as your cells maintain homeostasis, meaning constant and stable internal conditions on a cellular level. And then that of course affects our ability to maintain homeostasis on an organism level inside our bodies. So this is extremely important and it's going to come up later. All of these things are gonna come up later. All right, the next one might be my favorite. They are proteins. Their main function. I can't even pick one main function because they do so much. When you think proteins, I want you to think they run your body. Do not just think muscles. I feel like we have this misconception in our society that proteins are just for muscle building, and that is not true. They do so many things. They are the most diverse macromolecule and the most abundant. Over 50% of your cell's biomass is made up of proteins, okay? That is how much they do. Now, this is gonna be wordy. You can, in my students, you can just write the bold words if you want, but it's this is how important they are, which is why I'm including all these words. Proteins are enzymes that help control the rate of biochemical reactions. That's gonna come up again in unit three. Hormones that regulate our cell processes, like insulin, which plays a key role in our blood sugar. So a lot of hormones are proteins. Structurally, like what most of us think of, proteins have a structural component making up our bones and muscles. An example is collagen. Transport. Wow, proteins play such a big role in transporting things in and out of the cell. An example is hemoglobin, which helps to transport oxygen to our cells when they need it. Antibodies. Proteins play a huge role in our immune system by fighting, helping us fight off diseases with antibodies. Movement. Contractile proteins aid in muscle contraction, which allows then for movement in the body. Receptors. So you have these protein receptors on the outside and inside of cells that aid in cell signaling and passing along messages, which we'll talk about in um, our pathogens mini unit at the end of the year when we talk more about disease. And then an energy source, too, in the food we eat. An example is casein. Okay, so what do we find proteins in? Meats, nuts, dairy products. But many proteins are just made by your body as well. It's not just from the food that we eat. Their monomer is amino acids. There are 20 different ones. Those amino acids get linked together by peptide bonds. And that's what forms a polypeptide, so a chain of amino acids. Now, energy storage. Four calories per gram. So this is the same as carbohydrates. But just because they have the same amount of energy per gram as a carbohydrate does not mean we want to break them down for energy. Look back at that list we just went through. They do so many things for our body that we use them as a last resort for energy. Your body would much rather burn carbs and lipids then have to break down the proteins that it uses for so many other things. So that's really important. Okay, one last thing for proteins, and then I'll stop obsessing over them because they're so important, but is the importance of folding. Like I said earlier, proteins are the most diverse macromolecule, and this is because of their structure and function. There's actually four levels to their structure. So their primary structure is just the order of the amino acids, which we'll talk about in unit four. Their secondary structure is whether or not they, um, it's kind of if they fold into this pleated sheet or into this alpha helix. Then they have a third level structure, their tertiary structure, where there's these different bonds that form and it starts really folding in and becoming three dimensional. And then quaternary, where they piece together with other um, tertiary structures to make their overall shape. So what I want you to appreciate from this you don't have to know much detail about this for my, for your class, but I want you to appreciate one of the key themes of biology, and I would argue the overarching theme of my anatomy and physiology class. Form dictates function. What does that mean? The shape determines what it does. So it's so diverse in structure, which makes it possible to be so diverse in function. And so this is really important because if something happens and the structure gets changed, it affects the function. It's not able to do what it needs to do for our body. And that'll come up a lot as we talk about mutations when we get to heredity. 
Notice how I'm highlighting all the ways we're going to talk about this step again. That's how important it is. Last and most certainly not least are nucleic acids. Their main function is that they are informational molecules. They store, transmit, and express your genetic information. They are the blueprint for life. They are the instructions for making our proteins and our proteins run our show. They're found in DNA and RNA, so deoxyribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid. We do not get them from our food. We get them from our parents. You inherited half of your DNA from your dad's sperm and the other half from your mother's egg. That is where it came from. Structurally, the monomer um, are nucleotides. There are five, adenine, guanine, thymine, cytosine, uracil. I bolded the first letter because that is what we typically just abbreviate them as AGTCU. Um, this is one nucleotide. It has three parts, a five carbon sugar, one, two, three, four, five, a phosphate group, which that determines which one of these it is, or excuse me, the phosphate group, and then the nitrogen containing base is what determines which of the nucleotides it is. We'll talk about this much more in unit four. These nucleotides build together to make up the nucleic acid, so either DNA or RNA. This is a picture of DNA. It has a double helix structure. RNA is just a single strand. Energy, none. There's no energy stored in your nucleic acid, so they are not used for energy. They are never, ever, ever broken down as an energy source. That's really important. Okay, now we're going to organize all this information in a way that hopefully helps you to visualize and understand it a little bit better.